How is aluminum made? Suppose you had to design the perfect material, what would it be like? You'd probably want it to be plentiful and relatively inexpensive, strong, and lightweight, easy to combine with other materials, resistant to heat and corrosion, and a good conductor of electricity. In short, you'd probably come up with a material like aluminum. It's the commonest metal in Earth's crust, the third most plentiful chemical element on our planet, only oxygen and silicon exist in greater quantity, and the second most popular metal for making things, after iron or steel. We all see and use aluminum every day without even thinking about it. Disposable drinks cans are made from it and so is cooking foil. You can find this ghostly gray-white metal in some pretty amazing places, from jet engines and airplanes to the hulls of high-tech warships. What makes aluminum such a brilliantly useful material? Let's take a closer look. What's aluminum like? Aluminum is soft, lightweight, fireproof and heat-resistant, easy to work into new shapes, and able to conduct electricity. It reflects light and heat very effectively, and it doesn't rust. It reacts easily with other chemical elements, especially oxygen, and readily forms an outer layer of aluminum oxide if you leave it in the air. We call these things aluminum's physical and chemical properties. Alloys Aluminum really comes into its own when you combine it with other metals to make aluminum alloys. An alloy is a metal mixed together with other elements to make a new material with improved properties. It might be stronger or it might melt at a higher temperature. A few of the metals commonly used to make aluminum alloys include boron, copper, lithium, magnesium, manganese, silicon, tin, and zinc. You mix aluminum with one, or more of these depending on the job you're trying to do. Composites Aluminum can be combined with other materials in a quite different way in composites. Hybrid materials made from two, or more materials that retain their separate identity without chemically combining, mixing, or dissolving. So, for example, aluminum can act as the background material, matrix, in what's called a metal matrix composite, reinforced with particles of silicon carbide. To make a strong, stiff, lightweight material suitable for a wide variety of aerospace, electronic, and automobile uses, and, crucially, better than aluminum alone. What's aluminum used for? Pure aluminum is very soft. If you want to make something stronger but still lightweight, hard wearing, and able to survive the high temperatures in an airplane or car engine, you mix aluminum and copper. For food packaging, you don't need anything like the same strength, but you do need a material that's easy to shape and seal. You get those qualities by alloying aluminum with magnesium. Suppose you want to carry electricity over long distances from power plants to homes and factories. You could use copper, which is generally the best conductor, carrier, of electricity, but it's heavy and expensive. Aluminum might be an option, but it doesn't carry electricity so readily. One solution is to make power cables from aluminum alloyed with boron, which conducts electricity almost as well as copper but is a great deal lighter and less droopy on hot days. Typically, Aluminum alloys contain 90-99% to aluminum. How is aluminum made? Aluminum reacts so readily with oxygen that you never naturally find it in its pure form. Instead, compounds of aluminum exist in huge quantities in Earth's crust as an ore. Raw rocky material, called bauxite. This is the common name for hydrated alumina, a substance typically made from about two-thirds aluminum oxide with one-third water molecules locked into its crystal structure. Depending on where on earth it's found, bauxite also contains a range of different impurities such as iron oxide, silicon oxide, and titanium oxide. The world currently has about 55 to 75 billion tons of bauxite resources, enough to meet demand well into the future. If you want to turn bauxite into aluminum to make useful things like cans, cooking foil, and space rockets, you've got to get rid of the impurities, and the water, 
and split the aluminum atoms from the oxygen atoms they're locked onto. So making aluminum is actually a multi-stage process. First, you dig the bauxite from the ground, crush it up, dry it, if it contains too much water, and purify it to leave just the aluminum oxide. Then you use an electrical technique called electrolysis to split this into aluminum and oxygen. Electrolysis is the opposite to what happens inside a battery. In a battery, you have two different metal connections inserted into a chemical compound, and complete a circuit between them to generate electricity. In electrolysis, you pass electricity, via two metal connections, into a chemical compound, which then gradually splits apart into its atoms. Once separated out, the pure aluminum is cast into blocks known as ingots, which can be worked or shaped, or used as a raw material for making aluminum alloys. Making usable, shiny aluminum from rocky lumps of bauxite that you've dug from the ground is a lengthy, dirty, incredibly energy-intensive process. That's why the aluminum industry is so keen on recycling things like used drink cans. It's far quicker, cheaper, and easier to melt these down, and reuse them than it is to process bauxite. It's also much better for the environment because it saves a huge amount of energy. A Brief History of Aluminum Who discovered aluminum, how, and when? Here's the story as it happened. 1746. German chemist Andreas Margraf, 1709-1782, realizes that alum, a natural aluminum compound used for dyeing textiles since ancient times, contains an unknown metal. It's aluminum, of course, but he doesn't know that. 1809. English chemist Sir Humphrey Davy, 1778-1829, names this metal aluminium, and, later, aluminium, but is unable to separate it out. 1825. Danish chemist and electrical pioneer Hans Christian Ørsted, 1777-1851, turns aluminum oxide into aluminum chloride, and then uses potassium to turn the chloride into pure aluminum. Unfortunately, he cannot repeat the trick a second time. 1827. German chemist Friedrich Wuhler, 1800-1882, also makes a small quantity of aluminum by heating aluminum oxide with potassium metal. 1855. French chemist Henri St. Clair Deville, 1818-1881, uses sodium to separate out aluminum. Since sodium is cheaper and easier to obtain than potassium, Deville is able to produce more aluminum, enough to make an ingot. He puts this on display at a public exhibition in Paris, France. Deville's new method means aluminum starts to become more widely available, and the price begins to fall. 1886. Working independently, the American team of Charles Martin Hall, 1863-1914, and his sister Julia Brainerd Hall, 1859-1925, and Frenchman Paul Louis Toussaint Herold, 1863-1914 discover the modern method of splitting aluminum oxide with electrolysis to make pure aluminum. Their highly efficient technique, known as the hall herold process, is still used to produce most of the world's aluminum today. 1888. Austrian chemist Karl Bayer, 1847-1904, finds a less expensive way of turning bauxite into aluminum oxide, the raw material needed for the hall herold process. Together. The Bayer and hall herold processes drastically reduce the price of aluminum, enabling the metal to be used in much greater quantities. 1893. Studebaker launches an aluminum farm wagon for the Chicago World's Columbian Exposition. 1899. A Dirkop sports car with an aluminum body is unveiled at the Berlin International Motor Show. A few years later, the Pierce Aero Motor Car Company produces its cars with cast aluminum bodies. 1901. Motor pioneer Carl Benz produces the first aluminum car engine. Early 1900s. First aluminum recycling programs. 1913. Aluminum foil first produced. 1920s. Modern aluminum alloys begin to appear. 
1925. American Chemical Society officially changes the name from aluminium to aluminum in the United States. 1946. Aluminum is used for the bodywork of the lightweight, mass-produced Panhard Dyna X. 1957. The first aluminum power lines are introduced. 1959. Coors produces the first all-aluminum drinks can. 1975. Daniel Kudzik invents the stay-on ring pull tab for drink scans. 1990. The International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IAPAC, officially adopts aluminium as its spelling. 1994. The Audi A8 sets new standards in lightweight car production with an aluminum body framework weighing just 249 kilograms. Almost half the weight of a comparable steel shell. 2015. Ford launches an all-aluminum bodied version of its hugely popular F-150 truck. Facts about aluminum 8% of Earth's outer crust, by weight, is made of aluminum. A block of aluminum weighs one-third as much as a block of steel the same size. Aluminum foil is typically less than 0.15 mm, 0.0060 inches, thick. Pure aluminum reacts rapidly with air to form a rust-proof protective layer of aluminum oxide. Many cooking pots, pans, and tools are made of aluminum. Packaging represents about a fifth of all the aluminum used in the United States. It takes around 2 to 3 kilograms of bauxite, aluminum ore, to make just 1 kilogram of pure aluminum metal. Commercial ingots of aluminum are huge, and weigh around 16 tons. It takes over 20 times less energy to make pure aluminum from recycled cans than from bauxite. 1,100 million tons of aluminum worth $2.4 billion was produced in the United States in 2019. Although that's an increase over previous years, it's dramatically down on the 1,700 million tons of aluminum worth $3.94 billion produced in 2014, but up on the 2017 figure of 741 million tons. 67% of United States aluminum beverage cans were recycled in 2012. Aluminum is produced in around 40 countries, with about three quarters coming from just four countries, China, India, Russia, and Canada. In 2019, China was producing over half the world's aluminum, roughly 36,000 metric tons, and about 30 times as much as the United States.